every face is unique. We all want to look our best, and it helps to understand not only how we age, but how our faces move and work. By explaining what our muscles do, we hope you'll begin to understand facial expression and how repeated muscle movement can affect your facial appearance. This knowledge can then help open your eyes to the possibilities for facial rejuvenation in clinic. And finally, to make the most of your appearance, professional makeup artist Ray Morris will show you techniques to maximise the beauty of your upper face. The muscles of our face animate our facial expressions when we smile, talk and laugh. These repeated expressions can cause lines and wrinkles to form on the skin. Yet lines can be reduced and softened using non-surgical cosmetic techniques. Every face can be divided into three distinct areas. The upper face, mid face and lower face. In the upper face in particular, there are a number of muscles that create our expressions and some that also give us lines and wrinkles as we age. The frontalis muscle is the only muscle actually lifting the upper third of the face. It elevates the eyebrows to draw up towards the hairline. Due to this constant movement, wrinkles, known as forehead lines, form. The frontalis muscle is a very expressive muscle. It's often used when showing surprise, so it's natural to have some lines in this area often from a young age. The frontalis pulls up and the lines form horizontally across the forehead. The procerus muscle is located between the brows. It is a depressor muscle, which means it pulls down and can create a heavy fold or frown. This is seen as a line across the bridge of the nose. The corrugator muscles are also used when we frown. Over time, these muscles cause lines at an angle, pulling down in between the eyebrows. If your corrugator muscle is overactive, it can make you look angry, often when you're not, and contributes to your frown lines. A lot of people frown when concentrating or looking at a computer. Eventually, these lines can become more noticeable and might remain visible at rest when the muscle is not moving. Another important muscle active in the upper face is orbicularis oculi. These are the muscles around the eye that opens and closes them. This muscle group is situated all around the eye and its effect is most obvious when we squint or smile broadly. Like the procerus and corrugator muscles, the orbicularis oculi is also a depressor, but as a circular muscle, it pulls in all directions all the way around the eye. This movement can result in crow's feet, which fan out from the corners of the eye. With time, the constant activity of facial muscles contribute to line formation. In the upper face, the signs of ageing are generally crow's feet, frown lines and forehead lines. As we age, these lines can remain visible even at rest to form what are called static wrinkles. Understanding how your muscles work is the first step and your clinician can open your eyes to the possibilities. There are a number of options for rejuvenation and enhancement including muscle relaxants, dermal fillers and skin treatments that can help to reduce lines and wrinkles, as well as improve skin quality and texture. Talk to your clinician about which treatment options are right for you. Wrinkle relaxation treatments have been used for over 20 years in clinical practice and have been used in more than 20 million cosmetic patients worldwide. They are used to relax the specific facial muscles that can create undesirable lines and wrinkles. When these muscles are relaxed, the effect is a refreshed, more open appearance in the upper face. They can also reduce further lines forming. 
dermal fillers, including those made from naturally occurring sugars, can be used to fill in discrete regions like static wrinkles that are visible when the face is at rest, plus deeper folds and the lips. These sugars are already present in the layers of your skin, providing structure, support and skin elasticity. In the upper face, dermal fillers can refresh the eye area, alleviating a tired look by volumizing the tear troughs under the eye and plumping up hollow temples in both men and women. They can also be used to volumize the brow area to create a more youthful appearance in women of all ages. Volumizing fillers enhance or restore structure, volume and youthful contours to the larger areas of the face like cheeks and jawline. Now let's look at the skin surface. It is the outer layer of our skin that determines our complexion and is exposed to the elements every day. To keep your skin looking young and fresh, remember to protect against harmful UV rays with a good sunscreen that contains zinc, UVA and UVB filters. Cleanse and moisturise daily and exfoliate regularly to keep your skin smooth and drink plenty of water to keep your skin hydrated. Cosmetic skin treatments can also be used to improve skin texture and quality, minimising broken capillaries, pigmentation issues, sunspots, freckles or blemishes, and redness or rosacea. Your clinician can advise which skin treatments are right for you, whether cosmeceuticals or perhaps resurfacing techniques such as chemical peels, dermabrasion, laser or IPL. Looking after yourself with diet, exercise, sleep and possibly rejuvenation techniques in clinic can give you a refreshed look. But you can also maximise your look with makeup to bring out the beauty of your natural features. Makeup is my life. It can make a huge difference to how you look. But you've got to know the tricks. So I'm going to show you the golden rules. Generally, women do their foundation first but the best trick is to do your eyes first. The very first thing you should do is to remove all the oil from your eyelids. If you feel your eyelids right now, you'll notice they're the greasiest parts of your face. If you put eyeshadow on grease, it will just slide and not last long. So just use an alcohol-free baby wipe to remove any excess oil. Now I can apply foundation that I've matched onto the eyelids. And what this does, you'll notice, it removes any of the blue-red tinge we have on our eyelids. When you remove the blue-red tinge, whatever colour you put on your eyes will become vibrant and true to colour. This is a foundation brush I'm using, great for liquid foundation. If you're going to use an eyeshadow, you must powder your eyelids first. Powder on powder, always remember that. What I'm using is a translucent powder, something really fine that matches your skin tone. You can see that I've taken away any shine and your lids should feel like velvet. Now any eyeshadow I put on Kate's eyes will slide on like magic. The secret trick for getting rid of wrinkles is using eyeshadows that are completely matte. The minute you add shimmer, you enhance the wrinkle. So only put shimmer where you don't have wrinkles, for example the cheeks and along the lash line. I'm taking a bone coloured eyeshadow, something that's close to your foundation colour, and I'm putting a wash of this over the eyelids. When you're young, your eyelids have a beautiful neutral skin tone. Most women want their eyes to look open and more lifted. I'm going to show you the correct way to lift your eyes to make you look younger. Simply look straight ahead into a mirror. Find the highest point of your eyelid. Put a little dot where the highest point of your eyelid is. If you keep all your makeup level with that dot or above, you will lift your eye. The second you start contouring downwards, you drag your eye down. Start with neutral colours. Think neutral browns, neutral greys, neutral blacks. So, while looking straight ahead, blend a very soft straight line across to that point. The problem is, by darkening the socket, which most women do, you darken the eyelid and make it look heavier and more deep set. Instead, we want to push this part of the skin back. A really good tip to remember when you're doing your eye makeup is to make a line from the corner of your nose to the outside corner of your eye and keep all your eyeshadow blended on that line because this is what's going to give you that lift. Next, we're going to intensify the eyeliner around the lash line, but the same rule applies. 
Where the highest point of your eye is, we're going to make that eyeliner really thin all the way to the inner eye. And from the highest point of your eyelid, you can make it thickest from that point out. You can stop your eye makeup here, apply mascara and it will look fabulous. To make it a little stronger, take a black eyeshadow, matte black, remember we're not going to use any shimmer, and by darkening the corner you can see you're getting more lift and more pull. The most important colours women should have in their makeup kit are black, a grey and a couple of very matte browns. Those colours create shape and intensity. I'm going to move on to the eyebrows now. I'm probably the most passionate person in the world about eyebrows and this is going to change your life. Looking straight ahead, here is the rule. However wide your brows are here is how wide your nose will photograph. We get taught eyebrows should start at the corner of our nose and the corner of our eye and up. Instead, however wide you want this part of your nose to look is where you should start your eyebrows. When you're a little bit wider, what becomes a focus is the nostril area. And watch what happens if I move her brows into the desired bridge width. All you see is straight down the barrel. So if you're concerned that you have a wider nose, just move your brows in. Match the brow pencil to the exact brow hair colour you have. I find the most attractive thing to do with brows is not to draw the whole thing in, but to fill in what you need. So with Kate's brow, I'm going to move to that perfect line of her nose. And the other thing that's really important is, you've got to make this side of your brow at a right angle. Because if you don't, you'll get angry brows. And when brows go down and in, they point to the worst part of your eyes that also makes us look a bit grumpy. I'm using an angled brush and really softly making that more square. And moving her brow in a bit closer to her nose bridge. And here's my golden rule with eyebrows. The more you arch your brows, the more you drag your eye down. So when we get older, even above 25, we can get a very strong protruding eyebrow bone. The more you arch, the more this bone becomes a feature, and this is not a feature that is very flattering. So I'm going to show you something very controversial. I'm going to... For night time, you might want a more dramatic eye, something a bit more glamorous. I take a grey pencil and I go on the inner rim of the eye. It gives you a cat's eye. You must use a pencil that is not waterproof because waterproof pencils do not work on the inner rim of the eye. You can use a grey, a brown or even a black and go right into that inner rim. A lot of women do this on the inside of their eye only and it will actually make your eyes look smaller. You can already see right away it lifts that bottom eyelid. If you want to use eyeliner on the inner part of your eye and you want your eye to look bigger, make sure you've penciled around the outside of your eye first. As we get older, the bottom of our eye actually sags down. That's why lining the inner part of our eye lifts it and makes it look more dramatic. Another tip for ladies who love bright eye colours, the best place to put this colour is on the inner corner of your eye. The reason is that you never have to close your lid to see it and it's part of the eye that never wrinkles. I love using shimmer here as well, so I'm just going to take some gold shimmer, I'm going to wet my brush so it doesn't fall everywhere. When you highlight that part of your eye, it opens it up and makes it look a bit more youthful. It reflects light into the eye. So remember, silver, gold, violets, green, soft purple, bright colours are great for making yourself look younger. Eyelashes can create a dramatic effect and add a glamorous finishing touch. The best piece of advice I can give here is don't apply them all the way to the end of your eye, otherwise it'll make them look droopy. Start a third of the way in and just fill in the gaps with individual lashes. So now we're going to step back and take a look. The tips I've shared with you today are the tips I use every day as a makeup artist for all women, all races, all ages. Remember, it's about accentuating what is attractive in the face and minimising the things you don't like. Speak to your clinician about what's possible in clinic. Use clever beauty and makeup techniques at home. Looking great isn't luck. You can be your best with a little knowledge and a little expert help. So it's important to discuss with your clinician how your muscles are influencing the way you look. Your clinician can develop a unique treatment plan for you to achieve a refreshed and more rejuvenated appearance.